grab a seat. Do sit down. Thank you very much, Pastor Godfrey. Um, it is a special day today, isn't it? Father's Day. Thank you very much for my gift. I look forward to unpacking that later. How many of us already this morning have had something nice from a son or daughter? Have we had anything? No, nobody. Or you've got something nice to come. Maybe somebody's taken you out for lunch later on, something like that. Father's Day uh, is good fun, isn't it? There's some greetings on Father's Day. Dad, you're like fine wine. You get better with age and also are more likely to spill on the couch. <laughs> Dad, I'm your greatest accompli accomplishment. No need to thank me, just doing my part. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to the man who taught me everything I know, including how to avoid getting caught. I like this one. Dad, you're not bald. That's just a solar panel for a genius brain. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to the guy who uses his smartphone with just his index finger. And here's to you, Dad, for all the times you said yes when Mum said no. Happy Father's Day to you. I'm sure we never do stuff like that. Father's Day is about giving honour, isn't it, to dads. And man has come up with something like 32 million laws since those Ten Commandments were given to Moses on Mount Sinai. 32 million laws. God only, only gave us 10. Only gave us 10. Ten Commandments. That, that's it. And with man, he, he multiplies all the kind of rules and requirements. And you might think, oh, well, that's in the Old Testament. We've, we've got Jesus now. We've been those all off. We don't need to worry. But Jesus came to not destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Exactly, exactly. And when you run through those Ten Commandments, there's one in particular that is very relevant to today. It's the fifth one, Deuteronomy 516. It says this, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, that your days may be long and then it may be well in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Now to the best of my knowledge, that is the only commandment out of the ten that comes with a promise. None of the others do. And it's also time specific because your parents are not always around, right? So you can't honor them when they're, they're not about. And he says, honor mum and dad that your days may be long and that it may be well in the land that the Lord is giving you. So it's associated with individual benefit, but also the ability of the nation of Israel to remain in the land which God was leading them to. How interesting. You know, if we want to live a long and a good life, we can start by honoring parents. There are many things you can do to enable yourself to live a long life. But I believe one of the, the great reasons why Judaism is so strong and, and, and successful as a culture and a religion is because they, they prize giving honor to past generations. It's very important. They don't diss the past. They don't get rid of or, or forget. They, they remember what's past and, and, and honor it. You get Jewish families who, who gather together on the Friday night, have that family meal. They are honoring father and, and successive generations. You get the father placing a, a blessing on the children, but the children also honor the dad. And Father's Day is the time, isn't it, for honoring dads. Is it, do we do it because they're perfect and they're always doing right? No, we honor them because of who they, they are. You know, dishonoring parents in specific ways was associated with severe punishment in the Old Testament. According to the Torah, striking or cursing your father or mother was punishable by immediate death. 
you should remind your kids of that if they haven't booked <laughs> harvest if they haven't booked the harvester for the Sunday carvery today say look it is written it is written but it was treated very seriously uh, and you know it, it's sort of comparable with how we honor God you know if we, we can't honor our parents we can't honor God and maybe much of our rootlessness and decline in health is attributable to a failure to honor parents you know family is the building block of society it's God's institution you have a, a healthy building block there it's a healthy building block to build a society you might remember Barack Obama when he was president in 2008 he gave an address on Father's Day to a church in Chicago. He obviously grew up in Chicago. And it was especially poignant because he was somebody who knew what it was to gr grow up without a dad, basically. His dad sort of left his mum and him where, when he was really quite young. Uh, and his dad did come back, saw him at the age of 10, but that was the last time Barack Obama ever saw Barack Obama senior um, before he died. That, that was it. So he knew all about fatherlessness and, and growing up without a dad. And he said this, he was preaching in the church in Chicago. He said this, of all the rocks upon which we build our lives, we're reminded today that family is the most important. And we're called to recognize and honor how critical every father is to that foundation. They are teachers and coaches. They're mentors and role models. They're examples of success and the men who constantly push us toward it. But if we're honest with ourselves, we'll admit that what too many fathers also are is missing. Missing from too many lives and too many homes. They've abandoned their responsibilities, acting like boys instead of men. And the foundations of our families are weaker because of it. You and I know how true this is in the African-American community. We know that more than half of all black children live in single-parent households, a number that has doubled, doubled since we were children. We know the statistics that children who grow up without a father are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crime, nine times more likely to drop out of schools, and 20 times more likely to end up in prison. They're more likely to have behavioral problems or run away from home or become teenage parents themselves. And the foundations of our community are weaker because of it. And those were the words of Barack Obama, 2008. And what's true in America is also true exactly, exactly. If we have fatherlessness, we have a problem. Now, you may be saying, what about the problem dads? What about them that he refers to? Surely, we can only give honor to people who behave honorably. And that's a reasonable point, isn't it? You think, well, you haven't earned that honor. You know, I'll treat you well when you treat me well. Uh, uh, and you might say, you know, mum or dad, they're, they're not always deserving of honor because of the way they treated me. And, uh, and I don't want to disregard that. We will come to that because that throws up an important uh, aspect. Uh, and this is not about doing everything they tell us to do. You know, something there are, sometimes they ask us to do something that is dishonorable or abusive and that has an impact this is not about doing everything that mum or dad says so hear, hear me right that's important but the bible does say honor your mother or father honor your mother or father and i don't see any other stuff in brackets there you know, you know they're, they're not always perfect. You know, honor them if they're always perfect. You know, we, if you ever have the misfortune to be in court, except if you're a lawyer, you call the judge your, your honor because it's the position. He may or may not be a nice bloke or the woman may be nice or nasty, you don't know. But it's, it's the position in that courtroom that, that you respect. There's, there's a, a hierarchy there. Do you know what I mean? Romans 12, 18, it says this. If it's possible, as much as depends, 
on you, live peaceably with all men. It's not always possible to live peaceably with all men, is it? We try our best with the problem neighbor or the problem nation, and you can't always live in peace. But I believe God here is talking about best efforts. In other words, insofar as we reasonably can give honor, we, we do so. You know, there will always be examples of people where it, it's not possible, where that relationship has been an abusive one. He said in Deuteronomy, it's, it's time limited. They're, they're not always with us. We can only honor people really in, in the here and now. So I want to talk today about honoring, honoring our parents. You say the person next to you, honor your parents. You can honor your parents by accepting them, by accepting them. There was once a science teacher, and he was trying to teach his class about magnets. And he said, what begins with the letter M and picks things up? Pupil puts his hand up, said, mummy. <laughs> I say a father is someone who, in his wallet, now has photographs where he used to have money. And you, you end up spending an awful lot on your, your kids, more than you ever think, you know. If you logically totted up the cost of having a child, who, who would have a child? Nobody. And I remember it was a big thing before I had kids. I, oh, my goodness, I don't know how we're going to do it. But somehow you, you just get through, don't you? There is a grace for, for parenting there. And we honor our parents by accepting them. You get the caveat that I had? I, I know there are abusive parents. I know there are difficult parents. I know there are absent parents. But we it, it, accept them in spite of the negatives in most cases. You know, could you have had better parenting? We probably all could have had better parenting in one shape or form. Now I'm a parent, I know my own deficiencies. There's always something that can be improved. But we accept them to the extent that we're able. Proverbs 23, 22, it says, listen to your father who begot you and do not despise your mother when she's old. Sometimes, especially in Western civilization, we treat old people really badly, don't we? You know, when they cease to be useful to us and they just become a burden. You know, I remember my own grandparents saying, oh, I don't want to be a burden to you. You know, older people are not a burden on us, but they are ours to reverence and look after. The further you go east, the, the more culturally reverential often younger people are toward the old you know in western society yes give the, the, i don't know if you were clapping there for that <laughs> concept but go for it it's important and it's an aspect of honoring parents that is very very significant giving reverence to to people not because they're perfect but because they hold the role the position so we honor our parents by accepting them. We honor our parents by appreciating them. There was a little boy, and you know when you ask your kid sometimes to, can you help around the house do some chores? And his mum gave him a bit of an infantry. So, right, little Johnny, I want you to do this stuff. You're old enough, you can do some chores. So anyway, he was a bit miffed about this, and he wrote out a bill to his mum for his services, all these things he's got to do. He wrote them down. He said, um, putting out the rubbish, one pound. Washing up, one pound. Cleaning my room, four pounds. <laughs> and submitted the list to his mum on a bit of paper. Mum thought, okay, interesting. She made a little list. Washing and feeding you for 10 years, 50,000 pounds. <laughs> Nursing you through three months of illness, 20,000 pounds. Cleaning, 60,000 pounds. Grand total, I L O V E U. I love you. It was a bill she paid for by love. You know, if accepting our parents 
means accepting them in spite of their negatives. Appreciating them means saying thank you very much for the positives. Thank you for the things that they do right. You know, a third way in which we honor our parents is by affirming them. Affirming them. Sometimes only good things are said about somebody at their funeral. And you think, oh, how nice. It's really lovely things, but it would have been nice if they'd heard it in, in, in the natural, all of those things, all of those lovely eulogies. How about we can deliver a eulogy to people in the here and now? And sometimes, yeah, how many think, oh, if I could just have got back to my mum on her deathbed and said, oh, I remember talking with a colleague one time. He was just sat in the canteen and, um, he, you know, he just said, oh, I'd give any. He's a very highly successful man. But he said, oh, I'd give anything for just 20 minutes alone with my mum. But she's gone now and I can't tell her all those things I wanted to say. So I didn't, wouldn't need her back forever. It was just to be able to sort of say those things, you know. Let's say it in the here and now. Let's say it in the here and now. The other way in which we honour our parents is by not abandoning them, not abandoning them. And as I say, some cultures so, so much better at this than sort of white Britain. You know, there are other cultures as well who do it badly, but Britain perhaps is, is up there, isn't it? You go to other cultures, it really is a reverence kind of old age. You know, you go to Italy and often, you know, companies or whatnot are controlled by a small number of like really sort of old people, you know. Uh, and I'm not, not being anti-young, but, but there's a reverence for old people. As once a, a, a woman lived in a hut with her husband and some children in, uh, in a developing country, so he didn't have much. Uh, and his, the husband's parents, um, got unwell and came to live with them. So she thought, oh no, that's a bit of a squeeze, you know, just amongst me. And she's got all the, all the, the family in there. And um, before long, you know, they're really at loggerheads together. And um, she goes to the local village chief and says, you know, it's a nightmare. I've got the, the in-laws in and, you know, there's just no room uh, and stuff like that. And so he says, so, well, look, do you have a cow? She says, we do have a cow. He says, fine, right then. Move the cow into the hut with you. Uh, oh, okay, odd, odd advice, but did so. Put the cow in there. Come back and see me in a week. She goes to see him. Week later, he says, how's it going? She says, it's got worse. It's really, really tough. He says, okay. He says, um, do you have any chickens? He says, yes, I have got some chickens. So, okay then. Well, can you move the chickens in with the cow? So you've got the in-laws, the cow, the chickens, the kids, her, and all the rest of it. And he said, come back and see me in a week. So oh, was odd advice. Fair enough, I'll do it. Anyway, she goes back to see him after a week. He says, How, how's it going? She says, it's absolute hell. You won't believe it. it's an absolute nightmare. She says, what shall I do? And he says, get rid of the cows, get rid of the chickens, come back and see me in a week. So anyway, seven days later, she popped back to see him. She says, he says to her, how's it going? She says, it's heaven, just the people here. You know, you can have a situation and it's all relative in terms of what you've got to deal with. You know, we think, oh, my goodness, this imposition. There's so much on me. But it's all relative. I'm not saying we have to all take our relatives in with us. That's not always possible. But there's always stuff we can do to accommodate our parents, if we can, in their time of, of need. And it's a big thing, isn't it? Inconvenience is all relative. We can't do everything, but we can do our best. We may not be able to do anything, but at least if we can, we've tried, because that's the honourable thing to do. And lastly, the way in which we honour our parents is by praying for them. They may not be saved. They may not be with us. We may not know 
where they are. They may not be responsive to it, but by praying for them. If they're not a Christian at the moment, we can pray for them. The other question I raised is that parents should be worthy of honor. And they're worthy of honor out of position. But also, they should be worthy of honor by what they do. And now I, I am a parent, I know that more and more. You know, there was once a brother or sister and they were shouting at each other in the bedroom upstairs. And uh, the parents went up, said, what's this dreadful racket? And they said, oh, we're just playing mummy and daddy. They thought, oh my goodness, what have we been doing? The best way of correcting our children is by correcting the example we set for them. You know, they don't always do what we tell them to, but they do do what we do because it's learned behavior. I see it with my own son, you know. God is calling us to listen to our children as God listens to us. I believe that relationship is so precious because it's meant to imitate the relationship that God has with his own children. The key is to treat our children the way God treats his children, you and me. God understands us. We need to make every effort to understand our children. And if we get it wrong, we can admit it. And our kids broadcast a lot of stuff back to us. There was a pastor I, I knew and um, they were sitting down for Sunday dinner and um, somebody knocked at the door. It literally just said, oh no. And um, his wife goes to answer the door and they hear who it is to sort of hear the conversation. And um, my friend said to his kids, oh no, it's that bloke who always talks out of his backside. He would have called sort of right now. Anyway, his wife invites the bloke in for the meal, comes in to the dining room and he said, oh, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for coming. One of the children pipes out. He said, oh, you're the bloke who always talks out of your backside. He said to him afterwards, he said, look, what you said there, it was true, but it was the wrong moment. <laughs> your kids are mirrors of your own behavior. They end up saying things back to you that you thought you'd forgotten. We need to demonstrate love towards our children. Admit when we're, we're wrong. We know through Heal for Life, don't we, that it's easier to build children than to fix broken adults. And children need our time, don't they? You know, somebody said, love isn't spelled L-O-V-E, it's spelled T-I-M-E, time, in terms of the amount of time that we spend with, with our children. And lastly, not always a favorite, we need to discipline our children as God disciplines us. Saying, I love you, I don't always love, I love you, but I don't always love your behavior. Proverbs 13, 24 says, he who spares the rod hates his son. He who loves him disciplines him promptly. Hebrews 12, 6 said, for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Do we care enough to discipline and lay down rules that are enforced? And you stand in his presence. God is into honor. God is into honor, isn't he? And we need to, wherever possible, honor our father and mother because it's a relationship that is designed to emulate that between God and his children. And to the extent that we're able, 
we need to honour them. Honour the things that went right. Honour the memory. And equally, sometimes we need to acknowledge where things went wrong. You know, Psalm 27, 10 says, When my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take care of me. We may never have known the love of a mum or dad, but God is the one who steps in and brings healing into those circumstances. 2,000 years ago, God the Father gave up his only son so that you and I might be adopted into the family of God. Only God is the perfect parent. Only Jesus is the perfect son. We're all going to get it wrong in one way, shape or form. But God is the restorer and healer. God is God the Father of you and me. And we might need to pray for forgiveness where we've been less than the perfect parent or less than the perfect child. That may be our situation. Maybe there needs to be a, a restoration of honour for parents where we can. Maybe there are things we need to do. Maybe the only thing we can do is let them go in our heart because they're in the natural long gone. And we need to ask for God's healing and presence for what we can't do in the natural. But God is very plain, isn't he? He wouldn't have put it as the fifth commandment unless it was important. Honour your father and your mother, says the Lord. In order that it will go well for you in the land and that you will live a long life. Let me pray right now. Lord, we bless you for your word. Man came up with 30 million laws and regulations. You gave us 10. And furthermore, you fulfilled them perfectly in yourself through your sacrifice. And Lord, I pray for your power and for your healing. Lord Jesus, where there's been inadequate parenting, that absent father, that absent mother that Barack Obama talked about so eloquently. Lord, bring your healing and your power and your presence in that. Because Lord, you are, it says God the Father, you are the father of the fatherless. And where we've been abandoned, Lord, you accept us. And Lord, I pray for that healing, that power, that anointing where there's been absence Lord you bring your blessing and the balm of Gilead where it's needed thank you for your healing Lord thank you Jesus we're all imperfect in parenting and some of us more imperfect than others. And God, I pray for your healing and your power in that area. And God, we pray, Lord, for your forgiveness where we have not honoured our mum and dad the way we should have done. Where we've nurtured resentment, Lord. And Lord, we release it to you. We thank you, Jesus. The Lord God, you are our restorer in that area. Help us to honor where we've not been able to honor. Because that relationship is a reflection of you. And Lord, we pray for that, Lord. Help us if there are practical steps we need to take. Practically caring for them, praying for them, speaking to them words of love and affirmation, things that haven't been spoken. Let us do it this side of the grave. 
rather than regret not having been able to do it. Lord, we pray for that. This Father's Day, Lord, may we honor dads and mums in your mighty name. And Lord, we pray for that. And Lord, I pray for your healing and your power and your anointing upon us in this area. It's an area the enemy loves to get all over. Because, Lord, it's your building block for society. And, Lord, we just pray for your presence and your spirit in your mighty name. And just whilst every eye is closed in this place, whilst people have their own time alone with the Lord, if you've never given your life to the Lord, if you've never been able to call God Father, and you may have called God many other names, but not Daddy. I want you to put your hand up now. Because that's the relationship that is the most important one. You may have had imperfect family relationships all over, but God says, I want my relationship with you to be just right. I want to call you son or daughter, and I want, to call, I want you to call me daddy father if that's you just whilst every eye is closed in this place put your hand up and we'll pray for you and we'll pray together that sounds good pray with me dear lord jesus i thank you that you died for me and you died for me in order that i might call God the Father, the Father. And I accept you into my life right now. And I pray for your forgiveness for sin. That I would have eternal life forevermore in your mighty and powerful name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.